Hey, welcome back to Zach of All Trades. Tonight we're going to find out whether this homegrown foot powered wood turning contraption is capable of drawing blood. Stick around. There was a pretty fair amount of consternation over the last video as I cobbled together this haphazard wood turning machine. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that a few of you are convinced that my cheese has finally slid all the way off the cracker. And while I can't say for certain that you're not correct, I think that this thing's going to work and I think that it's probably not going to be nearly as treacherous as a few of you think that it's going to be. And now I have to say, I do appreciate, genuinely, I do appreciate your concern for my well-being as well as your uh, willingness to state that concern. So thank you for that, guys. And uh, as soon as we get this chisel tuned up here, which I'm going to give you this. There's a lot of <laughs> haphazard things that I do, and I'm going to fully admit that I'm using the wrong chisel for this job. This is the only chisel that I have as an option. Well, you know, this and its two brothers. But these are the only chisels that I have as an option for this job. And I'm not going to go out and buy uh, proper gouges for some cobbled together tool. So I figure the uh, best tool for the job is the tool you've got. I know. I know it's not, <laughs> it's not a proper thing to say. But, uh, well, it's going to have to be good enough for this job. One of the things that I've discovered after fooling with this a little bit off camera is that, surprise, surprise, a nice sharp cutting tool makes all the difference in the world. And my cutting tool was not very sharp while I was fooling with it last time. So we'll see how much of an improvement that makes. Let me walk you through a few of the improvements that I've made to my system since we last talked. First off is the spring return system. So, instead of the PVC pipe, which, I don't know, seemed like a good idea at first, but wasn't all that reliable, I have repurposed a worn-out resistance band, exercise band thingamajig here. It's got a couple of knobs in the end of it, all right? There we go. Now I have a very reliable bit of tension here. It's going to work just fine. The next improvement is on the stationary end of this thing. My intent was, when I first put it together, that having the, uh, having the attachment bolt right here, I didn't really have to worry about uh, much leverage and this end piece going, trying to rotate on me. But I discovered that the further out I go with my spindle, as it might be on painfully obvious to somebody else. If I've got this thing fully extended or mostly extended that two inches out, I've got a whole lot more leverage here and this thing really wants to rotate. So since that end shouldn't be moving, I just went ahead and put an extra screw in that just to keep it in place. Now this one, this is as far out as this is ever going to get. This is not, I mean, it's, I could adjust it, but it's not uh, going to be adjusted. This this uh, spindle is staying put where it's at and it does not have the leverage uh, for it to, to rotate so that is still just that one bolt and a wing nut holding that all together so there's that and the last part was something that was painfully obvious to me and probably was to most of you watching that and cringing I can't look away somebody wrote GP thank you for that I'm worried for you I can't stop watching I'm paraphrasing, of course, and it was the, the implication was that it's like a train wreck. You're not supposed to watch it, but you somehow can't look away. Yeah, I noticed that too as soon as I, uh, as soon as I put that stick, uh, what kind of hollowed out stick at the end of that, and tried to use that on the floor, a long stick on the floor as a um, as a tool rest. That was pretty, pretty quickly, pretty obviously, not a good way to do that. So. What I've got here is this, which is pretty simple, and it's just going to go, I'm trying to 
film with one hand and move stuff around with the other. So it's just going to go there. And then once I clamp down here and I clamp down over here, this will stay put wherever I, wherever I set it. It's not horribly adjustable. Uh, but if I need to move it, then I just release the clamp here and or here and then move it around as I deem necessary. So now it's starting to feel a little bit more like uh, a usable tool. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, and the other thing is that instead of the hokey little foot pedal thing that I had this attached to, I came up with another part of the exercise bands, the handle, right? It's going to act as a little bit of a stirrup that my foot can go through. I did some, we'll just call it beta testing on this, and uh, it's a lot more sound. I'm not trying to chase the doggone thing all over the place, which was adding to instability all over the place. And now for the project. Here is, this billet is a hunk of wood that I cut from that chunk of lemon wood that I'm going to use for this project. As you can see, I have done a little bit of uh, testing, just kind of fine-tuning and honing my skills at using this tool. And uh, I think, I feel like I've got a pretty good handle on it. So uh, rather than starting all over from scratch, I'm just going to go ahead and pick up here. And uh, we're going to move forward let you see what I've got in mind. here we have in all its glory a nice turned billet now I've had a couple of things crop up I got a little crack there but that's okay a couple of things though right here at the top of this there's far more vibration and vibration going on in this rig than I had anticipated so that cracked and broke out I had to put a clamp on there just to just to hold the whole thing uh, securely. So I don't know whether I'm going to try to rebuild this thing somehow or I don't know. I'm not sure what I'll do about that. Um, what was the other thing? Oh, the other thing was I I was pretty sure that this uh, this end wasn't going to turn because or wasn't going to rotate rather because it doesn't have much leverage on there. But I discovered that it was, so I put that clamp on there. But all you naysayers out there, I think that worked pretty well, huh? So now I'm just going to clean it up with some sandpaper, and we'll move on to the next step. All right, this feels a little silly. But why wouldn't this work, huh? down here. What do you think about that? So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to go ahead and say that my little foot-powered death trap works pretty good, don't you think? Mm-hmm. 
That's about as good as I can imagine it being. Now there is absolutely no question that that is far more exercise than any conventional lathe that you're going to come across. But hey, who can't use a little bit of extra exercise? I know that I certainly can and that's a small part of the reason why I like to use human powered stuff just because well I can squeeze a trigger and get the job done and not burn any calories or I can burn a few extra. That uh, makes me feel not quite so guilty when I go for that big dinner of schnitzel. Hmm. So, thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you found it entertaining, please give it a thumbs up and let me know that you liked it. If you have something to say about it, please feel free to do so. You know where to do it, down there in the comments. And if you think you know somebody else that might find this sort of uh, tomfoolery entertaining, please share it with them. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you again very soon.